On March 17, 2025, the Superjet regional airliner took to the skies of eastern Russia. But not a simple one. This is a prototype of an updated version of the airliner, SJ-100, and it was lifted into the sky by a pair of engines, the importance of which for Russian aviation industry is difficult to overestimate. Hello aviators, Sky here, and today we are listening to a song of metal and fire. I present to you the PD-8 engine. On May 19, 2008, the SSJ-100 took to the skies for the first time. The Superjet was a big project, the first brand new Russian civilian aircraft in many years. But there was also a lot of other noise around it, the main topic of which was the large share of foreign components, in particular engines. The fiery heart of the Superjet was the SAM-146, a jet engine created specifically for the aircraft, jointly by Russia's Saturn, now UEC Saturn, a division of the United Engine Corporation, and Francis Snecma, now Safran Aircraft Engines. Saturn's share in this corporation was significant, but a number of key components were supplied from abroad. In defense of the aircraft's creators, I would like to note that the airliner was aiming for a share of the global market, and international cooperation was an obvious solution. If you want to create a competitive aircraft, use the best from around the world. This is standard practice. No one is embarrassed by American engines on Airbuses or Dreamliner wings made in Japan. But when in the mid-2010s the word sanctions ceased to be an abstraction, a dispute arose in which on the one hand there was the idea, if it works don't touch it, the Superjet was already a serial and quite good aircraft, and on the other there was an obvious increase in the risks of excessive dependence on imports. And in the end the second path won. In 2019, an import substitution program was initiated, and its most important part was the replacement of engines. A project was born to create a prospective engine, in Russian Perspektivny Dvigatel, with a thrust of 8 tons force, the PD-8. The task was not easy, the engine had to be made quickly, no one gave 10 years for the project, and it had to be made relatively cheaply, this is not the only project and resources are not endless. Plus, it had to be maximally adapted to an existing aircraft, the SJ-100. That's its name now. It is still a basic superjet, not a new aircraft and not a new generation, like the A320CO and NEO or the Boeing 737NG and MAX. Again, there are neither resources nor time for such games. The cooperation was formed quickly. Its center and main manufacturer was UEC Saturn. Logical, considering that they have been working with Superjet engines since the appearance of Superjet. They developed the engine and they are responsible for manufacturing of most of the components and final assembly. They are helped by many other companies that have taken on the creation of the remaining parts, many of which have not been produced in Russia before. Although no, they were produced, but for a different engine. The PD-14 is a jet engine created for the MC-21 airliner. These two projects could well compete in ambition, because while the MC-21 was to compete with the A320neo and Boeing 737 MAX, the PD-14 was opposed by the CFM Leap and PW-1000G, both of which are current world leaders. In creating this engine, UEC developed a huge number of the latest technologies and solutions, some of which should now migrate to the fiery heart of the new Superjet. This made the PD-8 and PD-14, in a sense, relatives. What they have in common and what is different we will now find out, by getting to know the PD-8 better. The PD-8 is a classic modern turbofan engine and it greets us with this beauty. The fan, with a diameter of 48 inches, is an assembly of 24 titanium blades. There are no tricks here, such as hollow structures and composites, but this is a relevant design, modern engines of this class have the same. Behind the fan begins a dance of mechanisms, gases and flames. First, the air must be compressed, and the first to do this is the large drum of the low pressure compressor, a three-stage one. Next comes the high pressure compressor. It is completely new in the engine, with an optimized design, and unlike the old 6-stage version, it has 7 stages. This allowed to increase the efficiency while slightly reducing the load and increasing the resource. 
After passing through the compressors, the compressed air mixes with fuel and ignites in the part of the engine most interesting to us. The combustion chamber is one of the most complex parts to design and manufacture. Any flaw can seriously worsen the engine's performance. Hot gas requires the use of the most heat-resistant alloys and coatings. And as a bonus, in the small PD-8, all this must be compact. And another division of UEC took on the creation of all this beauty, the Idea Dvigetel Design Bureau, the guys who created the PD-14. Thanks to this, in many elements and parameters, the PD-8 is similar to its older brother. The next stage, gas having received heat, speed and energy, hits the high pressure turbine. It is single stage, a single disc heroically taking on the main heat and pressure. The high pressure turbine is followed by a low pressure turbine, in this case again three stage. At this point the stages end, and the nozzle equipped with a complex shaped mixer follows. Here for the first time, the flows from the outer and inner circuits meet, having different densities, speeds and temperatures. This crown is needed to mix these streams more gently, improving the dynamics of the air and reducing the noise level. This design adds mass, so they are almost never used on large modern engines, but on smaller motors it is quite common. Of course, it is unrealistic to control all this manually, and electronic brains come to the rescue. When creating automation for the PD-8, including mechanics, electronics, fuel regulation and FedEx, the experience and components of the similar PD-14 system were also actively used. And we usually don't see all this beauty, because it is hidden by the engine dress. The PD-8 nacelle is stretched along the entire length of the engine, which further reduces noise. In addition, it seems slightly flattened. Due to the small space under the wing, the engine systems are moved to the sides, which allowed them to reduce its height a little. An uncommon practice, but it is found, for example, on the Boeing 737. The nacelle is completely new and has absorbed many solutions from its sister, which is installed on the PD-14. 60% of the structure is made of composite materials, which allowed it to be significantly lighter. Plus, a large number of new soundproofing components are used here, making the engine quieter. The biggest innovation is the thrust reverser, a mechanism capable of reversing the engine airflow, acting as a brake during landing. And this device is new here. The SAM 146 used a simple bucket system, two rotating doors on the sides. The PD-8 received a new lettuce reverser with an electric sliding mechanism like the PD-14. So, we have sung the song of metal and flame, what does it give us? The bypass ratio is 4.4 to 1, meaning 4.4 times more air is pushed through the outer circuit than through the inner one. The pressure ratio is 28, meaning that as the air passes through the compressors, its pressure increases 28 times. Takeoff thrust is 7,477 kg force, maximum 8,056 kg force. In case of emergency, failure of the engine, heat, high altitude, or the need to take off quickly, like if the Langoliers have chewed through your runway. Technologically, the PD-8 is on par with the engines like the General Electric CF-34 or Rolls-Royce BR-700. But it would not be entirely fair to compare the seemingly brand new PD-8 with, well, not exactly the latest competitors. What happens if you compare the PD-8 with the cream of the crop? The superficial answer is tough. Yes, the PD-8's performance is quite average. It is better than most of its analogs, but still inferior to the top ones. Now for the nuances. Most leaders, such as the Rolls-Royce Pearl, PW800 or General Electric Passport, lift large business jets into the sky. These engines are noticeably more complex and expensive, and while the flagships of Gulfstream and Bombardier can afford this, ordinary commercial airliners, not so much. The only direct comparison is with the PW1000G family of engines, which are installed on the Embraer E-Jet E2 airliners, and they, I think, are a little more efficient. But everything comes down to limitations. It would have taken much more resources to create the top notch. They would have created it somewhere by the end of the 2020s, and with dimensions close to Pratt's, the Superjet would have to be seriously redesigned for it. And let me remind you, no one was going to do that.
Okay, enough with foreign competitors, especially since in the conditions of practically isolated markets, they are quite conditional competitors. And let's move on to the most interesting thing, a comparison of the PD-8 with its predecessor, and try to understand whether it is just an import replacement or whether the engine designers have managed to play with tuning. Externally, to be honest, it is difficult to distinguish them. There is no mystery here, just identical technical specifications. The plane is the same, which means the requirements for its power plant are the same. But what's inside? On the one hand, it is impossible to say that the PD-8 is a completely new engine that has nothing to do with its predecessor. Saturn already had quite modern production and experience. It would be strange to just bury it in the backyard and do it all over again. And why replace something that is already produced domestically? So let's say I would not be shocked if in the new engine I saw some of the predecessor's solutions. On the other hand, most engine components are either heavily modified or completely new, which has a domino effect on everything else. Can an engine that has little left of the base be considered a mere modification? And if so, then by this logic, each new engine model is just a modification of the previous one. And the main argument for novelty can be considered the difference in performance. The PD-8 should be quieter, lighter and more economical, and its flight resource should be longer. Without revolutions, the difference are counted in percentages, but still. Now it gets more interesting. The engines are close in thrust performance, but with an interesting nuance. We compare the basic PD-8 with a later version of the SAM-146, boosted 5% by software adjustments, something like chip tuning of a car engine. Further increase in thrust was limited, as it required a change in design. The PD-8 now is the base, and it can be boosted further. So the new engine allows the creators of the SJ-100, for example, to make the plane a little heavier. In addition, the presence of a single manufacturer can simplify modifications and increase thrust even more. So, how are things now? Design work has been actively carried out for several years using all advanced technologies, from electronic design and digital twins to 3D printing. This allows the project to be carried out at a fairly high pace. Not without adventures, but certification is planned for 2025, and creating a jet engine in 5 years is quite fast. This acceleration was caused, of course, by events external to the program. The limited possibilities for importing foreign airliners made the Russian superjet much more in demand. At the same time, stoppage of deliveries of key components of the superjet itself actually stopped its production. The task of aircraft manufacturers now, the gap between closure of the SSJ-100 production and the start of production of SJ-100 has to be reduced to a minimum. And engines are critical to this matter. You can make a super aircraft with artificial intelligence, a carbon wing and adamantium frames, but without engines it will be just a very cool monument. That is why increased attention is paid to Saturn. Their brainchild, the PD-8, has become the highest priority. In December of 2022, the PD-8 prototype took to the air for the first time under the wing of the IL-76LL Flying Lab. A huge array of other test work was also not far behind, some of which is being carried out in parallel to speed up the implementation of the program. The PD-8 was created as a part of a large program to update the Superjet, but over time it will probably lift into the sky not only the regional airliner. The second contender for the new engine is the B-200 amphibious aircraft, which currently flies on the D-436 engines. They wanted to replace it for a long time, and in this class it is right next to the PD-8, which being much more efficient than the old engine will significantly improve the performance of the amphibian. The next contender is, surprisingly, the IL-112V, which in its current version is a light turboprop transport aircraft. Recently, ideas have emerged to create its jet version with a pair of PD-8 engines. This idea has more questions than answers for now, so we will entrust skyships from the future to figure it out. And another big project is the PD-8V, a high-power turboshaft engine based on the PD-8, which should become the heart of the power plant of the Mi-26 heavy transport helicopter. 
The new engine promises a noticeable increase in the helicopter's performance, range, altitude, power and speed. Interesting, we'll stay tuned. In any case, if the PD-8 can become the basis for a family of unified engines, this will allow for an increase in production volume, which will be useful both for it and its customers. For now, of course, engine designers are aiming for the main user, the SJ-100. And the main user took off. There is still a lot of work to do. Certification of the engine and the aircraft is necessary. But at the current pace, everything needs to be done quickly. In the near future, we should see the beginning of their serial production. Dozens of engines for dozens of superjets. An equally important issue is maintenance. This is often overlooked, but without a pool of replacement engines, spare parts and personnel training, a project cannot be made successful. In fact, one of the main problems of the early superjets was the notorious MRO. The creators of the SJ-100 and PD-8 need to set up the infrastructure faster and better. The history of the SJ-100 and PD-8 is just beginning. Let's wish good luck to aircraft manufacturers and engine designers. And you, lovers of everything flying, like and subscribe to the channel. Fast flights on good planes with good engines and soft landings to you.